going guys i'm steve welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if it's your first time stopping by the channel hit that subscribe button trust me you won't regret it you're returning subscribers as always guys welcome back and i do appreciate the support <coughs> excuse me now i covered the story yesterday of a 17 year old jonathan lewis he was a student out there in las vegas and he lost his life tragically by getting jumped by a bunch of uh teenagers outside of school defending another kid supposedly now they have eight people out of what 15 that they said were guilty of this crime arrested and this is the new uh this is the new uh information that's out now honestly i think that they should teach conflict resolution in school and I'm not really going to get deep into this until after I play this video, but that's something I think they need to teach at a very young age. Because I think I think that's the problem. Part of the reason that we have a lot of these problems where we have a lot of kids acting mindless and acting out, throwing these certain type of rage type crimes is because they lack a lot of male influence in their life. A lot of times when a boy gets to a certain age, they go through things. Fights are just one of them. Arguments are one of them. And a lot of stuff that they do when they're toddlers is not, brought, is not taken out of them. And if it is, it's usually taken out by men because men can understand and they know that that type of behavior will not be tolerated in the real world when they become men. And um, I want to play this video and I'll really come back and talk about it because it's a damn shame that you got kids ranging from 13 years old to 17 years old in jail right now. Check this out. We'll come back and do what we do. All of us to have those difficult conversations with our children and remind them that their actions have consequences. Their actions have lasting consequences. Their actions have life altering consequences. Eight Rancho High School students arrested for the murder of their classmate. Two more are still wanted by police. Fox says Kim Passoff is back at Rancho High School tonight, near where the off-campus fight happened. She joins us live now with the latest from police. Yeah, last night we were here and we brought you that emotional interview with the father of the teen who lost his life after that brutal attack just off of school campus earlier this month. Today, Metro announced that there was a joint operation with the FBI this morning, serving nine search warrants, taking phones and clothes, as well as eight teens into custody. I'm here today to announce that we have eight suspects in custody for the murder of Jonathan Lewis. Nearly two weeks after the brutal attack on 17-year-old Jonathan Lewis, classmates at Rancho High School ages 17 to just 13 years old were taken into custody. After the fight occurred, he was laying unconscious and unresponsive in the back alley, and a citizen nearby saw him, uh, began attending to him, and carried him back to Rancho High School, which is what prompted the initial 911 phone calls. The fight happened right after school on November 1st. It is directly east of Rancho High School. Investigators say it was over a pair of stolen wireless headphones and possibly a marijuana vape pen. The 17-year-old victim stepping in to defend a smaller student. And the minute the punch is thrown with that person, uh, 10 subjects immediately swarm him, put him to the ground and begin kicking, punching and stomping on him. Not defending himself into the point where he becomes unconscious. Investigators say though the students were different races, there is no evidence this was a hate crime. If this was a hate crime, there would be someone getting arrested for charges related to being a crime. Monday, Fox 5 spoke with Lewis's dad, who says that justice will take much more than just the arrests of the attackers. Justice is, is a deep, deep thing for me, and there's a lot more to it than these things. They're just these kids going to prison. Justice to me is, and what, what, what is the community going to do about this? You know, what are, what are, when are people going to wake up and start having some compassion for one another and have some empathy? and actually have a sense of community and actually work towards real solutions that for these children that are just going absolutely mad. 
And police say that their investigation is far from over. They plan on releasing pictures of two more teens who they say were involved in the attack. Those pictures should be coming out shortly. As for, they're asking for witnesses to come forward, anyone who may have seen anything, anyone with video, even if you think that they may have seen it, they are asking you to submit it so they can continue to build this case. As for these eight teens who are already in custody, those 13 to 17 year olds, they are in juvenile hall tonight. It will be up to the district attorney whether or not they will be charged as adults. All right, guys, you know, usually in videos like this, <clears throat> I usually go off a little bit and do a lot of, uh, you know, just blaming and just saying stuff. But honestly, when I seen the ages of these children, from 13 years old to 17 years old, that's worrisome and it's sickening to me. It's depressing really how like just, I don't, you guys, I say this all the time. So I guys, you guys know this. The mind state of ma the level of maturity from somebody young, a young teen to an old teen is almost the same thing. How many times and how many crimes have we seen where there are children, barely teenagers, caught up with children that are almost deemed adults? Why are they hanging around each other? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Like I said before, we should teach conflict resolution in school, which is how to de-escalate situations. And I think that need to be taught at an early age from kindergarten up and just small incremental levels. I think it would be it would make a lot of a uh, I think it would be a big help. Because some of the stuff you're taught in school, if you're taught repetitively, especially at a young age, when your mind is absorbing a lot of knowledge and taking it in your subconscious, it becomes a part of you. So, you know. I think that's one solution. That could make the problem a little less heavy like it is. Another thing is this, and I want you to hear me on this. I think that, you know, Jonathan should have used better judgment. And I think he got caught up in the moment. Supposedly, they was fighting over some stolen ear pods and a marijuana vape pen. I know you might be wanting to take up for, for the younger kid and stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. But they're walking away from school. You've seen a bunch of people out there. You could tell by the crowd and the way the crowd was reacting if you was really paying attention to your surroundings. I honestly think he overlooked that step. You know what I mean? If you look at the guy, he seemed non-threatening. A lot of people look to take advantage of people to show that they're tough when they deem somebody not a threat. You hear what they said? As soon as he broke in, jumped in to break it up, 10 people just jumped on him. They'd be waiting. I was in high school. I seen this multiple times. Coward people want credibility from people they deem tough or they deem stronger than them that they want the respect of, hey, I'm helping you fight. And they jump right in there and do such deeds without no off button or cognitive control of your mind to know when enough is enough and everybody want to look tougher than the other. It was like him going into a grinder, a hands and feet. Is it his fault that he got killed? No. And this is the reason why he didn't see that coming. But I will tell you this. They said they had nine search warrants. And they arrested eight kids. You think them kids right now, not knowing what they was doing, was going to land them where they at? Ain't having a fit? Think about it. A couple of weeks ago, everything was fine in their life. And they made an executive decision that cost them everything. They talking about they don't know if they're going to try these kids as an adult. The way this story sounds and as vicious as it is. They need to be sweating bullets right now, and so do their parents. So do their parents. Because I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to certain things like this, you could have two good parents in the house, but your kid has to exist 
in the real world to them, which is high school, popularity, wanting to be accepted. So a lot of these kids felt pressure to do this. And I honestly think that. And I'm not saying like, you know, pressure to, uh, you know, uh, like you do this or you, you'll get beat up. No, just the pressure for acceptance. And that's one of the things that's going on out here right now. If you look at social media, everybody want to be rich. Everybody want to have money. Everybody want to be a bad chick. Everybody want this. Everybody want that. It seems like the more technology we have, the harder our lives become. And I'm not blaming it on technology, but when it's used wrong, this is the result. How can you sit there and record somebody getting beat to death? And then they walked off and left him for dead. If it wasn't for that good Samaritan that saw him and picked him up and took him somewhere to help. This would have been even worse, in my opinion. Conflict resolution. Understanding that everything ain't worth fighting for. Just think about this, guys. The father said he seeks justice and he said justice for him is not enough having them locked up. And he said he wants to see with, you know, the community and, you know, he wants people to be empathetic. I didn't say this in the last video, but just hear me on this. And one of the reasons why this video hits home to me is because they pulled the plug on Jonathan while his family was there holding his hand. And that happens a lot. So a lot of you guys who have your own stories that listen to me have been through this. I myself went through that. Them pulling the plug on my grandmother. <clears throat> you know, I talk about it in my live stream. Love my grandmother. We was close. And the feeling of powerless I had at 19 years old, seeing my love, my first love, my grandmother, like a mother to me. Flatline, it does something to you. I know what they went through. And that's why this story bothers me like that. The feeling of powerlessness, knowing that your son had never come home. Seeing him at his worst, damaged. See his body like that and knowing he'll never heal. And something inside you won't heal neither. And a big hole to be left that can only be filled with his presence, but he's gone. Everybody lost in this. Everybody lost. It's like Marcus Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I got emotional, but you know, it's all love with me. And a lot of y'all can empathize with what I'm talking about because you yourself have gone through that. What if it happened to wanting to be good, a good person and enjoying life for what it is? A blessing. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.